It's now 7.50pm. We see Agent Ferguson standing in the lobby of the Portsmouth Towers Hotel. Agent Balboni is sitting nearby. She is there for surveillance and backup, still listening in on Agent Ferguson's open mic on his phone. At 8pm, a woman in a tight, shimmering gold lame cocktail dress walks into the hotel lobby. She sees Agent Ferguson and heads towards him. This woman is actually Philip Kernan. Ready for some dinner? I've reserved a table for us here. I have something fun planned for after dinner and we can talk more privately then, okay? Um, sorry, what? Hey, Bob, is that a banana in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? A little puzzled, Agent Ferguson now pulls a large banana out of his pants pocket and says, Um, uh, it's a banana. I was feeling a little hungry. OMG. Phil, is that you? Philip Kernan is now staring at the banana and grabs it and says, You can call me Felicity? Man, that's huge! Yeah, I brought it with me from Australia. Our bananas are big. You know what they say. No, Bob. What do they say? Once you go out back, you never go back. I see. I love a big banana. Ready for some dinner? I've reserved a table for us here. Meanwhile, Agent Balboni is listening and looking on, wide-eyed in disbelief. Felicity Kernan and Agent Ferguson are now headed to the hotel restaurant. It's not very busy. The maitre d' greets them and seats them. Good evening. Do you have a reservation? Yeah, Kernan. Ah, yes. Miss Kernan, thank you. Please, this way. Holly will be your server tonight. Enjoy your meals. Felicity Kernan and Agent Ferguson look through the menu and engage in small talk. That's an interesting watch you have there. It was a gift. Apparently it was a gift. We see a man being shot by Agent Ferguson. He then removes the very exclusive Swiss watch from the dead man's wrist and says, Thanks, mate. It was about time. Good evening. My name's Holly. I'll be your server tonight. May I start you off with a beverage? Sparkling water for me, please. That sounds a little boring. I'll have a bourbon on the rocks. Very good. I'll be right back with your drinks. So, you like cars, Bob? Only expensive ones. I like the ones parked at your house. Yeah, the rewards of hard work. Here are your drinks. Sparkling water for you, sir, and bourbon on the rocks for you, madam. Do you wish to order now? Felicity Kernan's phone rings. He, she recognizes the phone number. It's from Country Code 61, Australia. Excuse me for a minute while I take this call. Hello, hello. Good day, Philip. It's Robert Alexander. Uh, what? Who is this? It's Robert Alexander. No, it's not. You're here. Who is this? Listen, mate. Aussie Secret Intelligence nabbed me. They know something. I see ya. Hello, hello. Who is this? Your wife. Uh, your husband checking up on you? No. Wrong number. Do you need more time? No. I'll have the Vitello Scalapini. And you, sir? I'll have the same as him or her. Thank you. Very good. So, Bob, I noticed you took the briefcase back. You haven't paid for it. Hmm? Right. Let me do that right now, and then you can bring it with you when we leave here tonight. Okay, sure. There you go. 415 bitcoins deposited in your wallet. There's more where that came from if you treat me right. Confirmed. You can keep the briefcase, too. When do you expect to move forward with the order? I'll let you know. Here you are. Vitello Scalapini for the lady and the gentleman. Felicity Kernan and Agent Ferguson have finished dinner. Cutlery resting on the plates, Felicity Kernan is signing the check. How about you get that briefcase, Bob? I'll meet you out front in the car. Okay, sure. Felicity Kernan and Agent Ferguson walk out of the restaurant. Kernan goes outside to the car whilst Agent Ferguson goes to the elevator. He stands there for a minute while he's messaging Agent Balboni. OMG, he's a she. Didn't see that one coming. That's what she said. Enjoy your date. Ha, huh. ha. Huh. Agent Ferguson exits the elevator and heads for his room. He looks around and enters. How was dinner? Startled by the fact that someone is sitting in his room, Agent Ferguson pulls out his gun. Crikey, don't do that. I almost shot you. What are you doing here? I had to pee. You sure you have bullets in that thing? Don't sneak up on me. I gotta go. Feel free to be here. Naked on the bed for when I get back. If you come back. Maybe you'll stay over at his or her place. I don't bloody think so. I'll be back. I'll follow you. I'll be out of sight this time. What's the code word in case I need to rescue you? Rescue me. More like I rescue you. The code word is help. Help? That's lame. You call yourself a spy? Fun chatting. Gotta go. We see Agent Ferguson come out of the elevator in the lobby and head for the door to get into the car. He gets into the back of Kernan's waiting car. The car drives off.
Agent Balboni is walking swiftly to her car. She now follows Kernan's car at a safe distance. She listens in via the open mic, but there is no conversation between the two men. A little while later, Kernan's car pulls up in the forecourt of his house, where the men get out of the car. Shall I garage the car, sir? Yeah. I'm not planning on staying. Yeah. Have you played laser tag before? No. Oh, it'll be fun. Come with me. Kernan and Agent Ferguson are now standing in the laser tag room. A couple of thugs are standing around as well, guard-like. This doesn't look good. Here's your laser. The goal is for you to try to get me before I get you. What does the winner get? You get to spend the night with me, darling. I see, and if I win... The game starts now! It didn't go unnoticed that Kernan didn't answer his question. Agent Ferguson runs and disappears into the laser tag room. Kernan starts to stalk him. The men shoot at each other as they spot each other. Kernan has a weapons-grade 3,000-watt laser, and every shot that makes contact with anything leaves a smouldering hole. If this goes on for a few minutes, it's becoming a tense situation. Agent Ferguson points his laser at Kernan, shoots, and realises his toy has no impact. It's a simple toy. He starts to get sliced up by Kernan a half-dozen times. There are burn marks on his smouldering clothes. Bleeding, Agent Ferguson is starting to realise this may be his ending. This isn't a game. It's now a death struggle. Meanwhile, Agent Balboni has received an urgent message from Agent Damas that Robert Alexander has escaped and may be in contact with Philip Kernan. Urgent! Robert Alexander has escaped, may be in contact with Kernan. Help! Balboni, I'm bleeding everywhere. Agent Balboni starts her car and heads for the estate. She's close by. Agent Ferguson is seen with many cuts. His clothes, smouldering, he's losing a lot of blood. Agent Ferguson is now just trying to hide from Kernan. Suddenly Kernan comes up behind Agent Ferguson, with his laser pointing straight at him. Oh, Bob! If that's your real name... This isn't my idea of foreplay, bitch. Both are now in a karate stance. Kernan kicks off her shoes and starts elaborate karate demonstration and at the end kicks Agent Ferguson in his crotch. Agent Ferguson drops to the floor and, quietly in a high-pitched voice, says, Help! Don't call me a bitch! How's that for foreplay? Agent Balboni bursts into the laser tag room. She shoots at the thugs and Felicity Kernan. Kernan and his thugs now take cover in the room and start shooting. Agent Balboni heads for Agent Ferguson, lots of gunfire being exchanged. Agent Balboni is carrying numerous weapons, including a rocket launcher. What kept you? I was busy filing my nails. Agents Balboni and Ferguson continue to exchange gunfire with Kernan and his thugs. The thugs quickly get killed, then... Agent Balboni aims her rocket launcher at the spot that Kernan is hiding behind. He's pointing his laser at Balboni, but she beats him to the draw and fires the rocket launcher. Balboni blows him to bits. The building is now heavily damaged and burning. Agents Balboni and Ferguson exit the burning building and head for the forecourt. I'll get a car. Agent Ferguson gets into the car on the right side, realises there's no steering wheel so he gets out and runs around to the left side, gets in and reverses up to Agent Balboni. You called for a taxi, madam? Yeah. What was that musical chairs thing you just did all about? I forgot that you have the steering wheel on the wrong side of the car in America. You don't look okay to drive. As Agent Ferguson says, I'm okay. He instantly passes out. Oh, great. Let's get you some medical help. With Agent Balboni now driving, they speed out of Kernan's residence and head off towards town. In the background, there are big explosions. The building blows up and burns. Some weeks have now passed. Agent Ferguson has survived with the help of surgeons at the local hospital, under the watchful eyes of the local CIA 24 hours a day. Agent Ferguson has now recovered sufficiently from his injuries to be released from the hospital, and we see him with Agent Balboni sitting outside on a bench. Thanks again for getting me out of there. I thought I was done for. Hey, no problem, sweetie. It would have looked bad on my resume if I'd left you there to die. So, what are you going to do now? My plane's waiting for me. I'm going home, unless you'd like me to stay, or come with me. We could be like Arnie and Jamie Lee in True Lies. That was a great movie, but this isn't Hollywood. It wouldn't work out. 
I'd get spooked, if you know what I mean, and kill you when you're not looking. I appreciate the heads up, Francesca. That's the first time you've called me by my first name. No one ever calls me by my first name. I'm just a cold-hearted assassin to everyone. But I have feelings, too. Damn you, Baza. Keep in touch. Agent Balboni, getting emotional, turns and walks away. Agent Ferguson now turns and starts to walk away as well. But then he stops and turns back around and calls out, Hey, wait, Francesca. But Agent Balboni has disappeared. The end. This was the final scene of the movie screenplay, Spy Harmony. Written by Wolfgang Schuler and registered with the Writers Guild of America East on December 21st, 2015, under registration, number 1284429. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental.